Thrawn was a male Chiss born on the planet Sicilla a few decades before the start of the Clone Wars. He grew up within the Chiss Ascendancy, a territory within the unknown regions controlled by the Chiss. When he was old enough, he joined the Chiss Expansionary Defense Force, the military branch of the Chiss Ascendancy. He soon reached the rank of commander, becoming the youngest Chiss to ever obtain such rank. As commander, Thrawn had many achievements to his name. He was the first Chiss to make contact with humans, with one of them being the Karelian smuggler, George Cardas. Through this contact, Thrawn learned Galactic Basic, the standard language of the Star Wars universe. He was also told about the Jedi and droids, two things that were unheard of to the Chiss. About five years before the Clone Wars, Thrawn would make contact with a small fleet of Trade Federation ships, commanded by Kinman Doriana, a trusted aide of Palpatine, who was sent on a secret mission by the secret Sith Lord to destroy Outbound Flight and its escort. The Outbound Flight was on a mission to explore the unknown regions and to reach the edges of the galaxy, and make contact with possible alien species outside the galaxy. Palpatine's motivation for destroying the Outbound Flight was to prevent them from discovering the Yuuzhan Vong, also known as the Far Outlanders, as had they done so, the galaxy would have gone into sheer chaos at the threat of a massive intergalactic invasion force preparing to attack the entire Republic, and such chaos would have hurt Palpatine's plans for securing the galaxy for himself. Also, there were 20 Jedi on board outbound flight, so Palpatine wanted to take them out as well. After destroying much of the Trade Federation fleet, Thrawn boarded the enemy flagships and confronted Kinman. During their meeting, Kinman explained his mission to destroy outbound flight, and told him how the Jedi on it posed a threat to Thrawn and his people. Thrawn listened but was unimpressed, and before he could continue his interrogation, he was summoned to a meeting with another Chiss Admiral who had just won a costly battle against an unknown alien force on the edge of the galaxy, which unknown to the Chiss at the time was the Yuuzhan Vong. Worried about this unknown dangerous force, and also not wanting to start a conflict in which the Chiss would have to fight multiple wars, Thrawn made a deal with Kinman that he would help him but only if he told him the full story of his mission. Reluctantly agreeing, Kinman explained that he was an advisor to Palpatine, who was the Supreme Chancellor of the Galactic Republic. He went on to tell him that Palpatine had information on a group only known by them as the Far Outlanders, who were massing an invasion force at the edge of the galaxy and that Palpatine was preparing the Republic to be able to repel such an invasion. Kinman explained how if the outbound flight reached its destination, it would lead the far outlanders, the Yuuzhan Vong, back to the Republic, and that's why it needed to be destroyed. After explaining his mission, Kinman contacted Palpatine by hologram to confirm his story. Palpatine was impressed by how easily Thrawn had been able to defeat Kinman's fleet. Palpatine then ordered Kinman to provide all the known reports and information on the far outlanders to Thrawn, after reviewing said data, Thrawn concluded that these so-called Far Outlanders were the same forces that his fellow Chiss Admiral had fought against earlier. Realizing the threat they posed to his people, Thrawn accepted the mission to destroy Outbound Flight. Satisfied with his decision, Palpatine gave crucial information on the Outbound Flight and warned Thrawn of the Jedi on board, informing him of how they were capable of using the Force in combat. When Thrawn confronted Outbound Flight and its escort, he initially wanted a peaceful resolution to the conflict and started a negotiation with the Jedi on board to have them return back to the Republic unharmed. But the stubborn leader of the expedition, Jedi Master Jerus Sebaoth, refused to retreat and instigated a battle between the two fleets, with at one point Sebaoth almost killing Thrawn by force choking him from his own ship. However, Thrawn was able to win the battle swiftly and was successful in ending the Outbound Flight's expedition. Afterwards, Thrawn's career in the Chiss Expansionary Defense Forces didn't last long, as he was soon exiled by the Chiss government due to his overly aggressive tactics and preemptive strikes on unknown forces that he believed were a threat to his people. They sent him alone onto an uncolonized world for him to live out the rest of his life. However, Thrawn didn't stay there long, as about a week after the formation of the Galactic Empire, a group of Imperials were dispatched to Thrawn's planet in search of a smuggler. Instead, they would make contact with Thrawn, who initially tried to steal an Imperial shuttle to use to get back home, but he failed and was instead captured. 
Under Imperial custody, Thrawn was taken by Captain Vos Perak to Coruscant to be personally presented to Emperor Palpatine, pleased to have the genius behind the destruction of the outbound flight from years earlier before him. Palpatine was able to convince Thrawn to use his superb tactical abilities for the Empire. He did so by telling Thrawn that the Empire was the best chance the galaxy had in defeating the imminent invasion of the Yuuzhan Vong. After accepting to join the Empire, Thrawn was privately trained by Perak and quickly rose through the ranks, becoming one of the very few non-human officers in the Imperial Navy. Thrawn achieved many victories and accomplishments in his early career in the Imperial Navy, including conquering numerous worlds for the Emperor, as well as initiating cooperation between the Galactic Empire and the Chiss Ascendancy to produce Chiss-designed Imperial Nissus class clawcrafts. As a result, Thrawn became one of the most valuable commanders in the Imperial military. About a year and a half after the destruction of the first Death Star, Thrawn was promoted to Grand Admiral by Emperor Palpatine. But due to Thrawn being non-human, this promotion was kept out of the public and was only known by a few. Along with the promotion and ceremonial title of Warlord of the Empire, Thrawn also gained deep trust and respect from Palpatine. Despite being praised by the Emperor himself, most of the other high-ranking Imperials looked down on Thrawn solely due to the fact that he wasn't human. Eventually, Palpatine gave Thrawn permission to go beyond the Empire's borders in the Unknown Regions to start building up defenses for potential outside threats to the Empire. In less than a year, Thrawn conquered most of the Unknown Regions and was able to establish multiple defensive bases. For his successes, he was summoned back to Coruscant and was invited by Palpatine to join the Order of the Canted Circle, one of the highest and most exclusive social orders on Coruscant. Such an invitation shocked the public as prior, only humans were invited to join under the Imperial reign. Before his return to the Unknown Regions, Thrawn assisted Darth Vader in his campaign against Prince Shizor and his criminal organization, the Black Sun. Doing so, Thrawn went undercover disguised as Mandalorian bounty hunter, Jodo Cast. As a reward for his help, Thrawn was given full control over the Nogri, a species who are excellent as assassins and bodyguards. After the Battle of Hoth, Thrawn began to engage the scattered rebels and was later assigned on missions to hunt down Imperial admirals who had either defected to the rebellion or sought to take the Imperial throne from Palpatine. By the time of the Battle of Endor, Thrawn was back continuing his work in the Outer Rim. After both Emperor Palpatine and Darth Vader were killed, the Empire went into chaos, with numerous high-ranking Imperials all trying to take control of the remaining Empire. This disarray let the New Republic have the advantage in the continued war which followed in the New Republic eventually capturing Coruscant, the capital of the Empire. Four years later, Thrawn would return back to the remaining Galactic Empire, a crumbling regime that only had a quarter of its former territory left. As the last Grand Admiral that was still alive and loyal to the Empire, Thrawn was easily able to recruit remaining loyal Imperials to his service, including Captain Gilad Pelion, a survivor of the Battle of Endor. Gilad Pelion soon became Thrawn's second-in-command. Before he engaged with the New Republic, Thrawn needed to acquire resources including obtaining the Isalamiri, a species that was capable of repelling the Force, and recruiting the Dark Jedi Juros Sebaoth, who was a clone of the Jedi Master Juros Sebaoth from many decades prior. He also went on to create some clones to fill his depleted ranks, and he recruited a Nogri named Ruk to serve as his personal bodyguard. When he started to attack the New Republic, Thrawn implemented a stateless strategy, in which he would quickly strike the New Republic then retreat, forcing the New Republic forces to overstretch and thin out their defenses, trying to defend everything. An ironic strategy, as the Rebel Alliance employed similar attack patterns against the Galactic Empire during the Galactic Civil War. With each battle, Thrawn got closer and closer to completely destroying the New Republic. However, his campaign came to a halt during the Battle of Bilbringi when amidst the conflict, Thrawn was killed by his bodyguard Ruck, who had learned that the Empire was secretly poisoning his people and decided to assassinate Thrawn. It is said that had Thrawn not been assassinated by Ruck, he would have steamrolled the remaining New Republic forces and would have taken control of all the lost Imperial territory. Thrawn did have a clone of himself stored in his secret complex, but it was indirectly destroyed by Luke Skywalker and Mara Jade after they discovered it.
Grand Admiral Thrawn was noted for his exceptional leadership and naval commanding abilities. As a leader, rather than punishing those that failed him like many of his Imperial colleagues did, he instead had his men learn from their mistakes and awarded them when they improved or showed creativity in their success. He also rarely ever killed those under his leadership, only doing so if they showed obvious disloyalty or complete disregard of their actions. He also listened to what both his advisors and his men had to say and took their opinions into consideration before making his next move. His men did not fear him but respected him and were proud to serve him. Thrawn also wasn't overconfident or arrogant with his attacks and would retreat and admit defeat when necessary, rather than not and lose men just to sustain his ego. When it came to tactics, Thrawn was an absolute genius, being able to outmaneuver and defeat literally anyone in an even battle. He did this by not only studying his enemy's battle tactics, but also studying their culture, their arts, learning who they are as people, and learning not only how they act, but how they would react in certain situations, giving him the ability to predict his opponent's moves with ease. Thrawn had a very analytical mind, resulting in him basing his decisions on logic rather than emotion. Thrawn's greatest, probably only motivation for serving the Empire, was that he believed it was the best bet the galaxy had against the Yuuzhan Vong invasion. He believed that under a unified galaxy, under a strong leader, a leader that was willing to do anything to achieve victory, would be unstoppable and could protect his people from outside threats. Although he respected and was loyal to Emperor Palpatine, he did share many disagreements with him, including the Emperor's decision of building massive and expensive superweapons rather than investing in the Imperial Navy to include thousands of more Star Destroyers and Super Star Destroyers. Although Thrawn didn't show much emotion, he did have great concern for his men and their well-being. Despite this, Thrawn was not above doing evil acts, such as when he orchestrated a genocide on a planet that wouldn't obey his rule in the Unknown Regions, or when he accepted to kidnap Leia's children in exchange for the Dark Jedi Jeru Sebaoth's service. But he did these things because he felt they were necessary for the greater good of the galaxy, and he didn't gain any personal satisfaction or pleasure when carrying them out. Thanks for watching this video. Be sure to subscribe for more videos like this one. And as always, may the Force be with you.